As I mentioned uh, this week coming, I will be in uh, Mississippi. No, Memphis. I've been in Memphis at the uh, church there. I have to look things over. We have a church business meeting there and set a date for dedication, dedicating the Memphis temple. After that, I fly into uh, Mobile for a business meeting there to look over the Mobile temple. We'll be dedicating that this year. After that, we'll be in Chicago, starting the new church there in the Chicago area. And the following week after that, we'll be in Columbia, South Carolina, rumbling, rumbling oh, yeah. with the devil. Yes, and uh, we have quite a bit of people down there just waiting. You know, it's at a point, well, it's been at a point where we really can't hold services in branch churches because even if the branch church is large, there's just so many people coming, we have to rent halls. And, but because the uh, pandemic is still going on, a lot of facilities won't let us utilize their facilities, so we just pack them in best way we can. But we was fortunate to get the place in Jackson, and it was jam-packed from front to back, and I'm thankful. All right, let's open up the book of pain and get ready to go to work. To our viewers, they're glad to have you back again. To my enemies, I'm always glad to see you. Well, I can't see you, but you can see me, but we're glad to have you heathens back. That way you can cuss us out and rage and holler. You know, sometime before we start preaching, they already start mashing thumbs down. <laughs> Haven't even preached yet. I find it interesting that my enemies are subscribers. And actually get a notice every time we come on. <laughs> I know it ain't nothing wrong with me, but something got to be wrong with you to subscribe to what you hate. But uh, to have an addiction and won't admit your addiction or to have an addiction and don't know you're addicted, I find interesting. All right, let's go to work. Twelfth chapter of the book of Revelation. Begin at verse 1. I want to define what is the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet <clears throat> and had on her head a crown of 12 stars. What do all these things symbolize? You know Williams is at the uh, screen now. I'm pretty sure he wished he was just reading. But uh, we're glad for old Moretti. He's doing a good job. <laughs> Williams, I hope to see you next week. Hope you feel better. God bless your heart. I hope you feel better. Don't come back uh, uh, and reunite your Trinitarian beliefs either. Now, after the benediction is given, you know what he always do when he's not here? He call me on my phone and then lay me out. But he be rejoicing about the message. Wonderful. All right, let's dive into the book of pain and take the word of God apart because this is what's missing in church, interpreting Bible. Anybody can read Bible, but what's missing in church is breaking down scriptures. This is what is meant to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery that was hidden in God who created everything by Jesus Christ. The fellowship of the mystery is this. You have to take the Old Testament and make a fellowship with the New Testament and make it fit perfectly without any form of distortion or contradiction. That's why around the throne there are 24 seats, which seat 24 elders clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. The 24 elders represent the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. There were 12 tribes of Israel. I want you to get this. And Jesus chose 12 men and made them into apostles. 12 plus 12 is what? That's what represents the 24 elders sitting around the throne. Show me that the prophets and the apostles was anointed by the self-same spirit. Yes. Amen. Sitting around the throne, let me know that God dealt with the prophets and God dealt with the apostles. All right, I'm not going to have time to strip it all bare like I want to, but 
We'll give you something that's better than nothing anyway. All right, Moretti. Are you ready, Moretti? Hope so. I hope you. I hope so too. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Is Moretti ready? <laughs> In the Book of Revelations, chapter twelve. Yeah. And at verse one. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Now hold it. I have to dissect this stuff as I go along. A wonder is something that don't happen all the time. Let's get an understanding. When the Bible said there was a great wonder in heaven, in the study of Egyptology, I want to use a natural example to get you to understand the spiritual. The Egyptians' alphabet wasn't like what we have today, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H-I-J-K and a lot of elemental P's and once in a while the Q-R-S-T and the U-V-W and the X-Y-Z. They didn't do that. But the Egyptians used pictures, images, symbols that was called hieroglyphics written on the pyramids and on columns to give you a history of what they encountered, what took place. The Bible talk in many symbolic terms. You have spiritual hieroglyphics where many try to take things literal, but many of these things are just images to give you a better understanding. So he used natural symbols. Notice the language of the Bible. It says what? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. There ain't no women in heaven. That's true. That's true. Because the Bible said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. So I said, but wait a minute. He just read there was a woman in heaven. That's right. And I come back and say, there ain't no female up there. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But God used the image the fall of a woman, <laughs> glory to God, to give you an understanding of what he's talking. And if you don't understand what he's talking, just keep listening. And God help her. Without with God help, we'll give you an understanding. Excellent. There was a great wonder. There was something extraordinary took place in heaven that it wasn't ordinary, but it was extraordinary. A woman clothed, clothed with the sun. Now I want you to take note. She was clothed with the sun, but... And the moon under her feet. Hold it. Are you listening to the old man? Yeah. The sun is called the greater light. The moon is called the lesser light. So the woman was exposed to the greater light and the lesser light. But the greater light had a greater effect. She wasn't dressed up with the moon, but she was dressed up with the sun. Clothed with the sun. She was clothed with the sun. And the moon under. She was engulfed with the sun. Now, before we dissect the sun and the moon, let's talk about the woman. The woman is the beginning of a nation. You don't have a nation without the female. A man can't even keep his last name in the earth. He can't keep his name without the female. So here you had the woman clothed with the sun. With the sun. And you had a nation. Amen. What was this nation? Israel. Why is it called a woman? Because Israel was an Old Testament church in the wilderness and it was a body. A body that kept producing until it produced 12 tribes. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Glory to God. In the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, all the tribes were sealed 
12,000 out of each tribe. The tribe of Dan wasn't mentioned there. You're in the book of Revelation quickly now. In the book of Revelation chapter 7. Begin at verse 1. And at verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Hold that. Go on and say, I told you, Pastor Jenna, the earth is square. All right. I ain't going to argue with you about the shape. It's still going to pass away. Right. I don't care if it's a rectangle or octagon. It's going to pass away. Right. But I know you can get a square in a circle. The Bible said, this is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as the grasshoppers. So when the Bible says what? And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners. The four corners of, of the, the earth, earth are oh. the four directions where the wind blow. North, east, west, and south. That's all that means. It doesn't mean the earth is flat. Hmm. It simply means the four corners are the four directions, like a compass. North, east, west, and south. Hmm. All right. Holding the four winds of the earth. Uh -huh. That the wind should not blow on the earth. Real quick. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Yes. And I saw another angel extending from the east, uh -huh. having the seal of the living God. Had the seal of the living God. We only got one here. Oh, yes. All of you that are trinities and got two more helping you, one, all your gods are weak. Right. We got one God, and I take any other God and flatten it with Bible. That's right. I want you to hear me, stiff necked preachers and fake churchgoers. Any other God apart from one is of the devil. Did you hear me? All of you that got more than one God, you worship the devil. Listen at this. Having the seal of the living God. I want to say, you talking about me? Yes, that go for if you're here. You got more than one God, use a pagan and a heathen and an infidel. Y'all three all rolled up in one. Heathen, pagan, infidel. Heathen, Pagan, infidel. I guess want to make it so plain that you just got to get what I'm telling you. Excellent. All right. Having the seal of the living God. Yes. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. And what? To whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. All right. Saying, hurt not the earth. Don't bother the earth. Neither the sea. Don't touch the sea. Nor the trees. Nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now, you had, out of each tribe was sealed 12,000. Dan wasn't mentioned there. So one of the grandsons, I believe it was Manasseh, that was mentioned in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation that took the place of the tribe of Dan. Out of each tribe was sailed 12,000, which gave a total of 144,000. 144,000 are the righteous. Glory to God. That's not the number that John was talking about when he said, I saw a number that no man can number. These were they arrayed in white robes, they have palms in their hands. That number is the church. That's the holy. Blessing the holy is he that have part in the first resurrection or set the second death, have no power. But when it says 144,000, that's the righteous that eventually will be taken up with the holy. Those are the select or the chosen ones that was the direct descendants from the seed of Abraham circumcised according to the flesh. You see, there are two families Abraham had. Blessed be God. Yeah. I said there are two families Abraham had. I want you to get this. There's a natural house where well, yeah, you're circumcised according to the flesh. And then there's a spiritual house where you're circumcised in the heart, in the spirit whose praise is not of men, but of God. The natural house is the church in the wilderness. The spiritual house is the church that started on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem, and we are Abraham offspring by faith because we believe and trust and have confidence in the same God of Abraham. That's what I mean, that there's two houses of Abraham, a natural house and a spiritual house. All right, let's go back to the book of Revelation so I can dissect this as I go along. Back in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, I and hope verse you can get 1. This. Yes. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. A woman dressed up. With the she sun. She was dressed up with the sun. Now, the woman also represents the church. The body of Christ. 
Because the church is called bride. Yes. And the church is called wife. Yes. And uh, notice, she was clothed with the sun, but the moon was under her feet. Under when you, her feet. Where, where the moon is, that lets you know a day is coming to an end. So when you look at the woman and the moon was under her feet, there was an end of an era, an end of a time. What was closing? What was coming to naught? What was being brought to an end? Moses' law. Christ is the end of the law. So here you had the woman with the lesson light at the bottom and yet clothed with the sun at the top. Haggai yeah. says, the glory of the latter house. You see, that woman was a house. The body, the church, that's in the production business of God's people. The latter house, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the sun in light is greater than the moon. Because when you look at the moon, the moon represents former. Former is that which once was. When the moon come up, that day now is about to be former, meaning past. And when the sun, blessed be the name of God, come up, that's the introduction of a new time, new era, new beginning. Blessed be the name of God on high. So God, are you listening to the old man? Oh, yeah. Was transforming Israel from a ladder house to a greater house. The ladder house, you are circumcised according to the flesh. And the foreskin of the flesh was held as a token. That was the former house. The ladder house, or the church of the last days, now you have to be circumcised in the heart. The former house, the priest had to have an instrument, circumcised the foreskin eight days after the child is born. Now in the latter house, a sharp, interest, a sharp instrument still must be used, but not on the lower nature, not on the outer man, but on the heart. And it's not something that a man can go buy and use it to remove the foreskin. But it's a sword to remove the stony heart. Oh, yeah. Lord, we'll take God and give him a heart of flesh. Right. So God circumcised now. He want to circumcise you within. External circumcision is good. But when Paul circumcised Timothy after it was done, he said circumcision profit of nothing. Because now the foreskin over the heart that keeps the heart from humbling itself. Yeah. And obeying God, the foreskin is called stony heart. Yeah. God come along and break up the heart of stone. Yeah. Glory to God, meaning a heart of stubbornness. Amen. And institute a heart of flesh. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. The woman, Israel, the body, the church, was clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. was under her feet. Whenever you see the moon and darkness come, that's a shadow. Or if they got cast over the earth. Give me the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews quickly. Let me see if that's what I want. Williams, is your mind working while you watch it? I'm pretty sure he got fingers all in the Bible trying to read it and looking at the screen. 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, begin at verse 1 quickly. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and at verse 1. Yes. For the law having a shadow. What? For the law having a shadow. Oh, you listen to the old man. Of good things to come. Hold it! The moon was under her feet. Whenever darkness is cast upon the earth, that's a shadow there. But when you have the sun, you see the good thing. The law having a shadow. Where there's a shadow, there's darkness. Holiness was in the Old Testament, but not all of it was made manifest yet. For the Bible said the way into the holiness of all was not 
yet made manifest while the first tabernacle yet stood. In other words, in order to get the force from a testament, you got to have a death of a testator. That's right. To better understand it, if you want to see the value of art go up, let the artist die. When the artist died, then and only then his work began to be appreciated and it increased in value. God is the greatest of all artists. Look at his artwork in the heavens. So good until it is written, the heavens declare, bless the name of the Most High. The glory of God in the firmament show off his handiwork. It is written, he bind the wind in his fist and he placed the waters in his garment. He gave the sea her decree and he hangs the earth on nothing. All the elements of the universe of God creation is 100% obedient to God but one. And that's man. The most hard headed, rebellious, stiff necked thing that God ever made. Mm. Man wasn't always like that. But when Satan was put out, falling from the grace of God, he contaminated man, which made man fall from the grace of God. So the fall of man is the behavior of Satan. So man failure had to make Jesus rise. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Man's fall had to make Jesus rise. For the book says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure, the shape, the form, the fashion, the image, or the similitude of him that was to come. Who came? The second Adam. Bearing the same shape, same form, same fashion as the first Adam. But the difference was the first was contaminated and the second come to rid us of contamination. Excellent, excellent. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What did Revelation say? Back in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and at verse 1. What is it? There appeared a great wonder in heaven. Great wonder. In heaven. Bless the name of the Most High. A woman, in heaven, a woman. Clothed with the sun. Clothed. Highly illuminated. With the sun. With the greater light, with the sun. And the moon under her feet. Now, when your mind is illuminated, you understand. So God is taking Israel from the shadow and bringing them to a higher level of knowledge, to light. Go back to the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews now. Let me finish that up. Back in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Follow me. And at verse 1. Yes. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. The law having a shadow. Of good things to come. Oh, wait a minute. There were some good things in the law to come, but it was a shadow. shadow. Let me give you an example. It was baptizing the cloud in the sea unto Moses. That was just a shadow of the good baptism to come. That's right. <laughs> good baptism. They took hyssop. Hyssop is her blood purifier. It took hyssop and sprinkled the book. They use a herb, which is a blood purifier, which is hyssop, and took water and used blood. Jesus come along, being the blood purifier. And he was a plant called a tender plant. Tender mean young. That would grow out of dry ground. And the dry ground was the house of David from the womb of the woman Mary or as the Arabs call her, Miriam. Are you getting me? Yeah. And just like they sprinkled the book, when he was pierced in the side, the scripture talks about how his garment was dyed, clothed with the vexture, dipped in blood, and written on him was the word of God. Are you getting me? Amen. Read on. 
For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Yes. And not the very image of the thing. It wasn't the very image of the thing. Can never with those sacrifices. Nobody with the sacrifices back then in the Old Testament. Which they offered year by year continually. Which they offered year by year continually. Make the corners thereunto perfect. Make what? Make the comers. Make the comers. Thereunto perfect. All them that came to the temple. All of them that witnessed the sacrifice, all of them that participated in sacrifice doing could not be complete, could not be perfect. For God saw the condition. For what? For then would they not have ceased to be offered. They would not cease to be offered. So God called it, saw the condition. It is written, heaven was searched, earth was searched, and he went down underneath the earth, and that was searched. He couldn't find a man worthy to open the book and look the seven seals thereof. And the apostle John, the son of Zebedee, the brother of James, said, I wept much, because no man was found worthy. And one of the elders spoke to him and said, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loot the seven seals thereof, meaning, the Bible said, When your God shall come. So God came in the flesh and loosed the seven seals of the book, meaning he fulfilled what was written. When the thing is sealed, it's closed. But when Jesus fulfilled what was sealed, he opened up the book until he declared himself to say, I am the way. He come establishing one way. I am the way. What else are you, Jesus? I'm the truth. Well, hallelujah. What else are you, Jesus? I am the light. No man come to the Father. Well, that's another God passage, Jennings. You're, you're so foolish. You're so foolish. No, that's not another God. That's another nature. No man come to the Father. No man come to the Spirit. No man come to the divine life except by the performance of the natural life. Glory be to God. Excellent. So the natural life, the body, the Son of God, the prophet, the apostle, the minister, the servant, was the sacrifice. Lamb of God means sacrifice of God. Lamb of God means offering of God. So God offered up that body once for all through the eternal spirit. The cross was equal to the altar where sacrifices are made. So when he hung there, glory to God in that darkness, hit creation, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. The body, the man, acts in the spirit that made that man. My God, my God, will hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from hearing the ring of my mouth? God had to forsake the Son. God had to leave the temple. God had to leave the body. God had to come out to serve it. So when God came out that body, because some preaching had to be done that the body couldn't do, he had to go down to the lower parts of the earth and preach to the spirits that was in prison. And he went down there, blessed be the name of God. And the body was taken from the cross, but God came. He went down on his own, but the body of the Son of God had to be taken down. And when they placed the body of the Son of God in the grave, the lower parts of the earth, the Spirit of God was already down there, preaching to the Spirit that was in prison. Yeah. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh and live according to God of the Spirit. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yeah. The third day, here comes the everlasting life, the Creator, Lord of the worlds. Same spirit that came out that body. When he came out that body, that's when the body was offered. Amen. And he went to the lower parts of the earth. Blessed be the name of God. The spirit that came out came back. He came back in the same body. The only thing, the body didn't have blood. That's right. Excellent. Yeah? Excellent. Didn't have blood. Hallelujah. Go and take off. It still was a natural body but it didn't have no natural life because Leviticus said the life of all flesh lieth in the blood. That's right. Blessed be the name Excellent, of God. Man. So here comes the spirit of the living God goes in a dead house. This is what it means when it says he rose a quickening spirit. You know, a lot of folks think quickening is just when the spirit jerk you. Quickening means to be revived. The spirit of God revived the body and when he revived the body, the spirit took the place of blood. Mm. So he no longer lived by natural. Now he lived by glory. Gets the body up and the body lived. Paul said, in that he liveth. 
He liveth by the power of God. Now he's in a state of a glorified state. Excellent. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. All right, let's go back now. Back in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and at verse 1. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Great wonder. In heaven. In heaven. A, a woman clothed. With the sun. With the sun and. And the moon under her feet. All right. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Where was the 12 stars located? Upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she be. Hold it. Crown. Royalty. Churches call a royal people. Churches call a royal priesthood. The reason why the church is called royal, because we are servants of an eternal king. The reason why the church is called priesthood, because it is our job to give God service, because the priests gave God service at the altar, and now the whole body must give God service, obedience at the altar. The priest was responsible for sacrificing the offering. Now the whole church is responsible for sacrificing the offering. What is the offering? Your individual self. Mm. Excellent, man. Excellent, excellent. Man. Are you listening? Amen. Well, God said, present, present your body. A living sacrifice, then he told you what kind. Holy! Blessed be God and acceptable under unto God. Hallelujah, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So here you have the woman clothed with the sun, the moon, and the feet, and upon her head was a crown. Of 12 stars. Because Israel was a royal people. 12 stars, that means each star represent each tribe. Simeon, Levi, Asher, Dan, Benjamin, Joseph, Judah, Reuben, is a car. All the sons of Jacob yeah. represent in the crown. All right. And she being with a, and she being with child. She being cried, with child. Cried, cried. Travelling in birth. You know, Israel is constantly producing young. Yeah. God in the Old Testament, the number of the children of Israel so large, so great. The Bible said the numbers as the sands of the sea. I believe God, when he was talking to Abraham and introduced himself to Abraham, he told him, count the stars if you're able. Abraham found himself unable. Count the sands of the sea if you're able. Why, well, Abraham found himself not able. God told him, so shall thy seed be blessed. So you have natural descendants of Abraham, them that descend from the tribes. And now you have those that are Abraham's children by faith, which is a spiritual house of Israel. All right. And she being with child cried, yes. travailing in birth, and, and pain to be delivered. Pain to be delivered. And there appeared another one. Here's another one. In heaven. In heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Great. Red dragon. Red dragon. Having seven heads. All oh, that. Great red dragon. Great red dragon. Why does the Bible use the color red? The clear manifestation of evil. Red lets you know the dragon is bold in its character. Bold in its appearance. Bold in its conduct. That's why one scripture says, Though thy sins be red like crimson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they shall be white as snow. Wonderful. Bless the name of God. Satan is called great red dragon. Red dragon. Dragon. He's vicious. Yeah. He's a beast. Yeah. Paul said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus after the manner of men. All right. Having seven heads. Seven heads. And ten horns. Ten horns. And seven crowns. Seven crowns. Upon, his, upon head. his head. And his tail. His tail. Drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Hold it. Glory to God. Let's get the Hollywood version of the devil out. And it says he drew a third part his of tail. the stars of heaven with his tail. Just get out your mind, a little red man in a tight suit. That's Hollywood. With little horns on his noggin. 
goatee beard and a mustache that's twisted at the end. And this long, scrawny looking tail to have an arrow at the end. No, that's not talking about that. The book of Isaiah tell us what the tail is. The Bible talks about the ancient of, de the ancient of days. He is the head. But the prophet that speak lies, he is the tail. So when he drew a third part of the stars of heaven with his tail, his tail was not in back of him. His tail was in front of him. His tail was his speech. He's a seducer, trickster, liar, more subtle than any beast of the field. All right. And his tail drew the third I guess part when, of the I guess stars. I just want to give you a little bit of it. I just want to give you a little bit of it, viewers. Amen. All right. And he drew a third part of, of the, the stars. stars of Hold it. He's not talking about the stars you see at night. Right. Star represent angel. Angel represent messenger. In the first chapter of the book of Revelation. You better go back to the first chapter of the book of Revelation quickly. And begin about verse 12, quick sign. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and at verse 12. No, go to the last verse. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and at verse 20. Yes. The mystery of the seven stars. The mystery of the seven stars. Which thou saw in my right hand. Which you saw in the right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. And the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels. The seven stars are the angels. Of the seven churches. Of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou saw us uh -huh. of the seven churches. All right. So that's what star means. So when the stars was drawn out of heaven, they were seduced, tricked, lied to, and the stars, which are the angels, lost their light. That's what a fallen star represents, the falling of angels. You know, when a star falls from heaven, eventually when it hit the earth, it loses light. It goes out. Glory to God. So when the angels fell out of heaven. They backslid. They lost their light, meaning they lost their godliness. They no longer reflect the intelligence of God, the wisdom of God, and the deeds of God. When you're a backslider, amen, you're like a fallen angel because your conduct show you no longer reflect the intelligence of God, the wisdom of God, the deeds of God. In fact, you become rebellious. And when you used to uplift God, now you uplift, you uplift the devil. When you used to submit to God, now you submit to the devil. And when songs of praises used to come out your mouth towards God, now songs come out to promote the devil. When you used to dance for God, holy, now you dance for the devil. When you used to clap your hands for God, now you snap your finger for the devil. Do so you see the transformation? Amen. All right, back to the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. Back in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and at verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Yes. And did cast them to the earth. Uh -huh. And the dragon stood before the woman. The dragon stood before the woman. Which was ready to be delivered. Which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child. Well, that's twofold. Satan wanted to destroy Israel. And Satan also wanted to destroy Israel. Moses, and Satan also, well, that's more than twofold, wanted to destroy Jesus. Amen. You know, when Moses come along, a proclamation was put out, kill all the male children. Amen. Uh, Moses, uh, Pharaoh certainly wanted to destroy this deliverer that he heard was coming, to deliver God's people from the hand of the Egyptians. So when a proclamation was sent out to kill all the male children, the Hebrew woman took uh, her child and made a basket and pitched it within and without. And then put the baby in the basket and put it on the water. And because the current of the water, Moses was saved by water. Pharaoh's daughter find the child and name it Moses, meaning I brought you out of the water. Well, here comes Jesus. King Herod put out a proclamation, kill all the male children. The angel of the Lord appears to Joseph. Take the woman and the child, go down down the Egypt. That the scriptures might be fulfilled, a son shall rise out of Egypt. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. 
All right. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Yes. And did cast them to the earth. Uh -huh. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Ready to be delivered. For to devour her to child. To devour her child. As soon as it was born. As soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child. Brought forth a man child. Who was to rule all nations. What? Who was to rule all nations. Look at Jesus. With a rod of iron. With what? With a rod. With a rod? With a rod with of a iron. With a rod? With a rod. Lord, they got the prophet Isaiah, saw Jesus, and said, A rod shall come forth out of the stem of Jesse. Stem of Jesse. Right. And a branch shall go out of the roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, counsel, and might of the fear of the Lord. A rod is also a scepter. Yeah. Jacob was about to die, he called his sons together. And he looked at Judah and said, Judah, thou art he whom thine brethren go and praise. Thine hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whip from the prey, my son. You're going up, you stood down as a lion. And as an old lion who shall rise him up, the scepter, the authority, the power, shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from between his feet until shallow coming unto him. Shall the gathering of the people be, but when he come, he's going to bind his foe to the vine. And his ass is coat to the choice vine. He's going to wash his garment and wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. So Jesus' garment was washed in the blood of grapes when he hung there on the cross. When they pressed him in the side, out came blood and water. You know, a grape grow on a vine. And if you squeeze a grape, it'll die you. So here you had Jesus, the true vine. And when they pissed him on the side, in the side, the true vine was pissed and the blood came out. Yeah. The word of God and died is vexed. Wonderful. All right. And she brought forth a man child. Yeah. Who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Rule all nations with the rod of iron. Rule all nations with authority. Rule all nations with the power of God. And her child was yeah. caught her up. Her child. Was caught up unto was God. caught up. Unto God. Unto God. And to his throne. Wait a minute. Yeah. The child had more than one meaning. Yeah. The child also represents the church. Because the church has to be caught up right. unto God. So I said, well, the church is many. The church is not a child. The church have a title of a child. The church is also called son. Yeah. For the Bible said, let my son go right. that he may serve me. And the time will come that God's child, God's son, God's body, God's bride, God's wife. You see, the church is called son because we got to serve him. The church is called bride because the church is responsible for producing children for the body. And then the father of the bride is going to bring up his son, bring up his wife, that we may take on the same glory that he had. Excellent. Now you got the son, Christ Jesus, that was caught up. Glory to God. That fleshy body was transformed from celestial, from terrestrial to celestial, and the celestial kept the shape of the terrestrial, right. and the celestial kept the name of the terrestrial, and the celestial kept the fashion of the celestial, and the celestial kept the name that was given to the terrestrial from the celestial. Wonderful, man. Are you getting me? Amen. The terrestrial got his name from the celestial. God is a spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God! That's it, be God is a spirit. And they that wish of him must wish of him in spirit. And in truth, so even though he rose and the body was glorified or the body became spiritual, no longer natural, but it still held the same shape, same form, same fashion, same name that he had when he was flesh and blood, but now he just simply glorified. Amen. All right, come on. Her son. child was caught up unto God yes. and to his throne. Still had the title child. That's right. Still had the title son. Yes. Uh -huh. And the woman fled into the wilderness. The woman fled to the wilderness. Where she had a place prepared of God. Where she had a place prepared of God. That they should feed her. That they should feed her. There a thousand two hundred and three score days. days. And there was war in heaven. Here it is. Yeah. See, the Bible's not written all the times in chronological order. That's right. Now he goes to another subject. And war in heaven. War in heaven. Who is it? Michael and his angels. Michael. 
Michael bear the title Archangel, meaning head angel. Michael and his angel? Fought against the dragon. Fought against Satan. And the dragon fought in his angel. And that let you know the devil, he ain't going down without a fight. No, no. That's why we got so much problems with him. Right. If he fought God, who in the world are you? Exactly. It ain't like these false prophets, viewers, that get on television that you love to look at, the mega liars, and they sucker you into believing the devil ain't got no power. The devil used him to lie to you. Don't tell me the devil ain't got no power. Anytime you can cause war in heaven, war. The devil didn't come to bring peace. He brought war in heaven. War and manipulated, heaven. tricked, conned angels who didn't strive to be holy, but they was made holy when the day God made them. Oh, yeah. And if he can make angels fall and turn against God and then join him in war, what do you think he'll do to you? All right, son. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Yes. And the dragon fought in his angels uh -huh. and prevailed not. They didn't get victory. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So the devil and his angels can't be saved. I said the devil and his angels can't be saved. Give me the book of Jude. Jude is right next to Revelation. Only have one chapter. I want to show you where those angels are. The preacher said that the angels that came out of heaven is walking around the earth knocking up women making babies. I said, lie out of hell. I lie came so far out of hell, I wonder how it got out, but it's out, and we want to beat it back in. Right. Damn, them angels ain't making no babies. Man making babies. <laughs> I got to admit, man is devilish, but that rascal, <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't going around. Oh, hey, man, the angels ain't going around making no babies. I'm going to show you where the fallen angels are right now. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, and at verse 6. That's what? And the angels which kept not their first The place. angels which kept not the first estate, the but, first place. The first place were holy. Uh -huh. But left their own habitation. Left their own dwelling place. He have reserved. God have reserved. In everlasting chains under darkness. Wait a minute. Yeah. Where are they? In everlasting chains under darkness. Where are the fallen angels? He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. They're not loose. Everlasting change. They're not loose. They are in reserve. Yes. In everlasting chains Wait a minute. darkness. How long them chains last? Everlasting chains. Well, I don't read where parole going to be given there. <laughs> That's right. Everlasting, everlasting is perpetual. Everlasting chains. <laughs> Under blind darkness. Blind infidel, the anger walking around knocking up women. No, that's you. You, you want to blame the angels? That's you. That's right. You're the one knocking up making babies, Mr. Preacher. You're the one that got about five women pregnant in the church. Hmm. Don't blame it on the angels, Bishop. Glory <laughs> to the Father. <laughs> Come on, son. You have reserved an everlasting chain. Yes. Under darkness, unto the judgment. Wait a minute. How long are they reserved? Everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment. Unto the judgment. Of the great day. That's what. The great day is the coming of the Lord. Yeah. And that's what the apostles meant when they talk about the church, how we shall judge the angels. Yeah. The angels that the church going to judge are the falling angels. Mm. Them that backslid. So you know you got 